equilibrium. It is a term we have already used, but now we're going to talk about two different types of equilibrium. We have translational and we have rotational equilibrium. Translational equilibrium is the equilibrium we already talked about. Christina, what is the condition for translational equilibrium? What's the equation for translational equilibrium? Who could help Christine out here? Christina, what is the equation for translational equilibrium? The net force is equal to zero. That's what translational equilibrium means. If something, if the net force is equal to zero, it means it's in translation, translational equilibrium. What does that mean physically for the object? Puja. It's not moving. Okay. An object that is not moving is in translational equilibrium, but an object that is in translational equilibrium is not necessarily not moving. An object that is at rest is in translational equilibrium, but an object in translational equilibrium is not necessarily at rest. Newton's second law, Hannah. Net force is equal to mass times acceleration, where both force and acceleration are vectors. At rest is one option. If the object is in equilibrium, that means that the net force is also equal to zero, which means what else, Jessica, is also equal to zero? Um, the, acceleration. the acceleration. So the acceleration is equal to zero. Therefore, the object is either at rest or what? Moving at a constant velocity. Moving at a constant velocity. So again, if it's in translational equilibrium, that means the net force is equal to zero. This means that the acceleration is equal to zero. That means that the velocity is not changing. Therefore, the object is either at rest or it's moving at a constant velocity. Now, whenever you sum the forces, you have to identify a direction. Please remember that. You always have to identify x, y, in, so on and so forth. Translational equilibrium is net force is equal to zero. Rotational equilibrium means that the net torque is equal to zero. OK, what does that mean then in terms of what's happening to the object? Christina, what do you think? What does that mean? We're using the fact that we just talked about translational to apply it to then rotation. You're, you're, you're trying to use this to build. Who, who can help her out here? We've already talked about translation. We're trying to apply that now to rotation. So what does it mean if the net torques are equal to zero? That means that the angular acceleration is equal to zero. Therefore, the object is either, does it really have an E on the end? I, I, I feel, yeah, OK, yeah, good. I just couldn't decide whether they really had it. Okay. It means the object is either Dana or oops, or at a constant, not angular acceleration, but rather velocity. Technically, it is a constant angular acceleration because it's zero, but I'm not going to do that. So it's a constant angular velocity, or it's at rest because the angular acceleration is equal to zero. Now, to complete this, I do want to put what it's equal to 
It's equal to the moment of inertia times the uh, angular acceleration. Now, moment of inertia, capital I, is not something that's a part of this class and we don't really go over it. I did talk about it briefly at one point. Recall that the moment of inertia is equal to for a, an object with shape the integral of r squared with respect to the mass. Integrals are not a part of this class. But for those of you who are taking AP Physics C next year, don't you worry, that will actually make sense to you at some point. Trust me, it will. All right, so what happens here is the net torque is equal to zero, therefore the angular acceleration is equal to zero, therefore the object is either at rest or at a constant angular velocity. Remember, whenever you sum the forces, you have to pick a direction. Whenever you sum the torques, you have to identify an axis of rotation. Now, that is so important and so often forgotten that I am, yes, using various colors today, and I'm going to put that in yellow. Caution. Oh boy. Yellow caution. Danger. No, it's a warning. People forget it. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to come up with some reason for the yellow. Okay. Um, Okay, so please don't forget the axis of rotation. Although yellow, you can't read it all, which is yeah. somehow goes against the whole concept. I don't know. I have to figure it out. But you know what it says, right? Yes. Yes, you do. What does it say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the yellow doesn't work. What does it mean, class? Axis of rotation. Axis of rotation. Please remember, you have to identify your axis of rotation whenever you are summing the torque. There is one other type of equilibrium. It's the concept of static equilibrium. And all that means is if you are in static equilibrium, you are in both translational and rotational equilibrium. So static equilibrium is both translational and rotational equilibrium. And when something is in static equilibrium, you can pick any axis of rotation. Because if the object is in static equilibrium, it isn't actually um, necessarily rotating in any direction. Therefore, you could pick any axis of rotation. 